at the functional level Bharatanatyam has three aspects. So, welcome to this class again and we discuss today these three aspects. One, Nritta, abstract dance movements with rhythm but without expression of a theme or emotion, also called pure dance. Two, Nritya, interpretative dance using facial expressions, hand gestures and body movements to portray emotions and express themes. Three, Natya, the dramatic aspect of stage performance including space, spoken dialogue, mime and conveying meaning and enact narratives. You are with me so far? Good. Adavus and Nritya Hastas are the foundation of Nritya, the first aspect we spoke of. Adavus and the full range of Hastas, the hand movement, hand gestures together with facial expressions or Abhinaya make up Nritya. The use of Abhinaya and character provides the dramatic element or Natya. Abhinaya enters all aspects of the dance including Nritya, Nritya and Natya. For Vajika Abhinaya, when you sing and dance, when you speak and dance as in some traditions, Kuchipuri, Bhagavata Mela Natakam and many others, the Vajika Abhinaya one should understand the lyrics or the words of music. For Angika Abhinaya, knowing the language of gestures is the key or very important. For Ahari Abhinaya, an aesthetic sense of fulfillment, Alankara is sufficient. Some familiarity with Indian dance style and dress and decoration also helps which is why I am sitting in such a nice colored kurta for you today because aharya or costume and makeup also is important. It helps decide the mood of the dancer and the theme in presentation. Satvika Abhinaya evokes a response to the emotional state of the dancer. The basic unit of dance in Bharatanatyam is the Adavu. Each Adavu is a combination of steps or positions with coordinated movements of the feet, legs, hands, arms, torso, head and eyes. Adavus like Aryamandi give Bharatanatyam its distinct look. The Adavus numbering around 120 in all are divided into numerous groups and subgroups. Some Adavus are accompanied by rhythmic syllables or solukattus or chalukattus that put together the steps of the Adavu in a sequence or time meter. Cholakattus, which in Tamil means spoken, soul, chol, structure, kattu, is a verbal description of an arrangement of beats or steps. For example, the phrase tai yum ta ta tai yum ta is the cholakattu for an adavu named natavadu. Various cholakattus have phrases like tai ya tai ye tading taganutom or kitta takatiganutu tarikatitom. In Bharatanatyam, when we use hands, gestures, the language is called hastas. Often you hear the word mudras. Mudras is used for iconography. It is for statues, for inanimate objects. But for animate or living beings, it is hastas. So we have hastas and sometimes hastra mudras loosely used. These are one-handed hastas or two-handed hastas which you all very well know of. These are many many different varieties and combinations and you can always study them at length in the comfort of your own home and time. Today we take you on this journey of these details in Bharatanatyam language. When a hasta is employed in a specific context for a specific purpose, it gets a special name for that use. For example, hastas are used to denote deities, celestial bodies like the nine planets or relations. Their names are changed according to the application. All the hastas found use in Nritya but only a subset of them are used in Nritya. These are also called Nritya hastas. During Nritya, the hastas convey no meaning. They are purely decorative. In Nritya, 
The hastas are vital aspect of the expressive language one is trying to convey through dance. They describe things and objects. They express concepts like truth, beauty or passage of time. They depict thoughts, words, actions and they combine with facial expressions to show emotions. The same hasta used with different arm movements or in a different context can have a different meaning. This is how the Tripataka Hasta can be used for fire or a tree and can also become the Vishnu Hasta. The facial expressions of Bharatanatyam are called Abhinaya. The dancer may enact many passing feelings, Sanchari Bhava, to show the effects Anubhava produced by the causes Vibhava of the emotional state and to reveal the fullness of the dominant emotion, Sthai Bhava. In Bharatanatyam, there are Navarasa or nine emotions, Sringara, love, Veera, valor, Karuna, sadness, Adbhuta, amazement, Raudra, fury, Hasya, laughter, Bhayanaka, fear, Vibhasta, revulsion, and Shanta, calm, peace, and countless passing feelings that may be enacted. The Natya Shastra lists eight types of Naikas based on the emotional circumstances. In addition, there are categorizations like the ten graces of women, the ten stages of love, etc. Characters may also be classified according to their stature as Uttama, Noble, Divine, Madhyama, Human and Adhama, base, as well as accordance to their moral disposition as Svakya, faithful wife, or Parakya, married but longs for another, and Samanya, who is a courtesan. The music compositions for Bharatanatyam allow passages of abstract dance to be interposed in the performance. The sequences of syllables are called Cholukettus or Jatis. A passage of rhythmic syllables during the recitals is called a Tirmanam. The artistry is compromising a Tirmanam is an interaction of the Jati passage with the rhythm of the musical composition. The Margam or the linear format of a traditional secular Bharatanatyam recital meant strictly sticking to starting with an invocatory slokam, Pushpanjali, offering of flowers to space or gods or guru, and then dovetailing in technique showing item like Alaripu in which various stances and structure of Bharatanatyam could be seen. The Margam consists of Alaripu, Jatiswaram, Sabdam, Varnam, Padam, Javli, Tillana and a concluding Sloka. As described by T. Late Basaraswati, the format reflects a marvelous scheme of aesthetic progression as well as a unique architectural conception. In a lecture delivered at the Tamil Lisai Sangam Madras, translated from Tamil by late S. Guhan and reproduced in Bala on Bharatanatyam, a monograph published by Sruti Foundation, the legendary exponent of Bharatanatyam said, I believe that the traditional order of Bharatanatyam recital is the correct sequence in the practice of this art for revealing the spiritual through the corporeal. The greatness of this traditional recital pattern will be apparent even from a purely aesthetic point of view. In the beginning, Alaripu, which is based on rhythm alone, brings out the special charm of pure dance. The movements of Alaripu relax the dancer's body and thereby her mind loosen and coordinates her limbs and prepare her for the rest of the dance. Rhythm has a rare capacity to concentrate. Alaripu is most valuable in freezing the dancer from distraction and making her single-minded. The joy of pure rhythm in Alaripu is followed by Jatiswaram, where there is the added joy of melody. Melody without word or syllable has a special power to unite us with our being. In Jatiswaram, melody and movement come together. Then comes the Sabdam. It is here 
that compositions with words and meanings which enable the expression of the myriad moods of Bharatanatyam are introduced. As the above passage reveals, Bala Saraswati believed Bharatanatyam is grounded in bhakti and that it is justified in being called a yoga because it is a spiritual discipline perfecting the mind to thought-free serenity. But the traditional margam is no longer considered the rigour. In other words, what was once considered the format of Bharatanatyam has lately been modified many a time by all and sundry. It has yielded its place to many variations as well as to dance dramas and miscellanies presented by groups of dancers trained in Bharatanatyam. Thus, while the margam can be considered most suited to unfold the major dimensions of the dance, it cannot be held that unless it is used, a Bharatanatyam recital ceases to be one. The symbolism apart, the pure meter, alaripu, and the music and meter, jatiswaram, the word music and meter, sabdam, and the elaboration and lofty expression of all three facets, varnam, music without meter, Padam and Javali, meter and melody in abstraction, Tillana, reveal the logical evolution of the dance and pacing of the Margam format. The Tanjore Quartet's concert format is still being followed though the Jatisram and Sabdam have become less common. A Bharatanatyam presentation usually consists of either of three possibilities, a full Margam format presentation, maintaining traditional items like Alaripu to Tilana mode, in this, normally a progression of items is shown and a debut performance must showcase each so level standards of students can be ascertained or established. Till the 1980s, most veteran dancers of yore like Bala Saraswati, Indrani Rehman, Kamala, M.K. Saroja, then the next generation of star dancers like Yamini Krishnamurti, Padma Subramanyam, Sonal Mansingh used to undertake a full margam. This was important to show and see. They had the requisite learning and long training and stamina to back with substance to show. In last three decades, most next generation dancers started doing theme based shows to show beyond the margam format, though not sacrificing the form. Like Malvika Sarukai, Alamel Walli, Leela Samson, and Urmila Satyanarayanan. In last decade, those who haven't learnt long enough to showcase margam properly or feel the need to depend only on traditional format have taken to a combination of the two. To do one group varnam so students get a chance to dance and or show one or two padams that are not stamina intensive. Some have made only facial abhinaya as mainstay because they can't do technique or bend the body. Lastly, those who have just learnt a smattering of the form and can't do full show resort to mix and match, one technique, one theme, one group and some abhinaya items. Yet another is to make one subject the theme, say Andal, Ahilya, Ravana or Chandalika, environment, all empowerment. Third option is to do either group works of say Alaripu, like Chandralekha and Angika or a student and clones or take group of students and teach them one varnam or padam or make them one thematic group presentation. In thematic presentation, a theme is often taken as a leet motif. Leet motif means a continuing strain of thought and an idea which is developed into an item or a presentation. Say spring ritu or varsha ritu in modern times. Spring means the season of spring, vasant. And Varsha means spring when rains and you have this monsoon and you think of themes like Meg Dutam Kalidasa's famous work. In modern themes, we can take up themes like gender equality, women's empowerment, environment or any social issue. This trend started when educated city dancers in the 1980s did not wish to do a traditional margam, Alaripu to Tilana, which we all know of, don't we? So, in order not to do the margam, which they felt had been done for many decades before, they devised some themes which could be novel, thus making new presentations or one thing which could depict it for an hour. Say for example, one takes a theme of child empowerment or gender equality or take from a specific era, 
say a sangam poetry. So instead of doing five or seven items in a margam, one would do one hour's presentation or more on one theme. Some very famous dancers like Alar Mailwali's work in sangam poetry, which is nothing new but from second century and yet contains new meaning and interpretation in her hands or feet today. So that is using tradition in a new manner of representing the same idea in today's scheme of things. In Malvika Sarukai, we have patterns and we have themes which partake of both tradition. Likewise, we have other thematic presentations where one could think of Khajuraho or Yatra or we can think of ideas which transcend beauty as we have known in this vast form Bharatanatyam. I hope you understand the range of topics and subjects and themes possible today. Traditional artists like Vajanti Mala insist that though art and activism are part of life, it will not be reflected in a dance. Priya Darshini Govind is a much sought after dancer of the traditional repertoire. Kitapa Pillai's disciple Nartaki Nataraj is acclaimed for her pure Bharatanatyam style as well as work in bringing ancient Tamil literature to light and life. Alamel Walli's extensive research on Sangam poems for over two decades has resulted in a significant repertoire of dance poems. Walli feels that folk and popular arts are a better tool for protest. It looks forced if we use Bharatanatyam to talk about violence, rape or corruption. The way I see it, classical arts are a way to harmonize the mind, elevate it, but that cannot be directly connected to what is happening on the streets. Part of the criticism faced by classical dancers today is that they perform old tales and myths whose relevance in our times needs to be questioned. Also, there is pressure from festival or conference organizers as well as corporates to present theme-based performances. This gives rise to a whole new take on presentation of Bharatanatyam by way of poems, song use, costumes and music. Even spoken words in other languages are interposed in a Bharatanatyam presentation. According to Lakshmi Vishwanathan, for serious artists, the need to reinvent their repertoire is as important as their understanding of the aesthetic values. Our richer literary heritage can be explored for nuggets of beauty when it comes to presenting new items. With a view to present epic women other than the usual heroines such as Sita Draupadi, I sifted through Tamil poetry and found remarkable verses on two mothers, Kaushalya and Devaki. They are, in my opinion, supremely selfless women whose voices can be heard if we care to listen. While the intensity of a Karikal Amayar can give scope to both Tandava and Lassian depiction, the sweet words of Andals in Nachaya Tirumuri are like the song of Koyal Bird she sends a messenger to Lord Ranganatha. In Kannada, we have a passionate verse of Akka Mahadevi. To dance to some of Abhima Subhalakshmi's Meera Bhajans is a pleasure because the simplicity of ideas affords us eloquent opportunity for Bhava. Dance and poetry are inseparable. To choose the right verses from the great bank of a classic writers is a task worth straining one's ability for. Bharatanatyam has grown. While the standard repertoire is no longer standard, the old gems such as Padavarnams and Padams are irreplaceable for the grandeur and honest classicism. However, a new repertoire for special programs culled out of rich literature and tuned tastefully is sure to make Rasika sit up and watch. Geeta Chandran's Gandhi, Warp and Weft, focusing on Mahatma Gandhi playing the role of hero in the epic of India's struggle, has been acclaimed for its sensitive portrayal. Her choreographies, her voice and imagining peace articulated her conviction that dance can be a vehicle to build social bridges. Her KK and choreographies on the themes of drugs have thrown the spotlight on issues of social stigma. Mythology's retold addresses the social curse of female feticide. Geeta is also known for using Bharatanatyam to amplify gender and environmental issues. Rama Vedanathan's Chitravali actually had her performing Bharatanatyam to a backdrop of miniature paintings and all Hindustani music ensemble. Her Mad and Divine on women points say of huge success. 
Umla Satyanarayan is happy with doing the Margam as also thematic production like Panchali of Mahabharata or Meera, the Lotus of Prem on the Saint Poet. Sri Kala Bharat, disciple of K.J. Sarasa, is known for her group productions like Arupadai Viru on Six Abodes of Muruga, Chakravarti Thirumagam of Ramayanam, Sri Tyagaraja Vaibhavam on Saint Tyagaraja and so on. Apart from Margam, Kavita Ramu is also known for thematic solos like Navarasam, Madhuripuri Niliyam and Goddess Minakshi. All these dancers well known for the traditional Margam as well as thematic presentation. Nati Rangam, the dance wing of Narad Gana Sabha in Chennai, is known for its thematic Bharatanati manual festivals on themes unvisited by Bharatanatyam artists. Some of the festivals over the years are Bhupala Bharatam on Kings, Ramayana Bharatam on six Khandams in five languages, Dasa Bharatam on Bharata Saint Poets, Chetriya Bharatam on Holy Places, Tirtha Bharatam on Holy Rivers, Bharatam Kari Kasayam on Tamil short stories, Vande Matram on India's freedom struggle, Bandhava Bharatam on relationship, etc. This festival offers young dancers a platform for experimentation and exploration of new horizons in Bharatanatyam, encouraging them to use their creative skills. Some presenters conceive evenings devoted to only Padams, only Varnams and only Javlis. Bharatanatyam is also juxtaposed with other dance styles. In USA, the Cleveland Festival Commission's group Bharatanatyam Productions on chapters of Ramayana and Mahabharata, choreographed by eminent teachers like Radha, Jayanti, Subramaniam, Radhika, Shurajit, Nartiki Nataraj, Anita Goa, etc. Gurus specializing in dance dramas are Krishna Kumari Narendran, Sheila Odni Krishna, Anita Guha, Chitra Vishweshwaran, the Dhananjans, and P. Bhanumati, to name a few. Kalakshetra is, of course, famous for its dance dramas with the new students going solo recitals. Kalakshetra Products, Sri Yit Krishna actually choreographed Man in the Iron Mask a few years back. In expressional dance, Kalakshetra has not held much sway. A stylistic school represented by Kalanidhi Narayan started influencing Bharatanatyam stances in the 80s and has been gaining ground since then. Narayana and her disciples are undeniably the most visible face of a Bharatanatyam expression today. And paradoxically enough, this style emph emphatically emphasized the titillating aspect of sensual love is now being taught in Kalakshetra. There is a Christian yoga and Christian Natyam where through Bharatanatyam, Mary and Jesus are glorified. In Bharatanatyam schools abroad, they are taught three versions of Bharatanatyam. A Hindu version, a secular version that speaks of human rights, violation, feminism or the like and a Christian version and told to perform according to the audience, says Rajiv Malhotra, the Indian American author and founder of Infinity Foundation. A Sinhalese Bharatanatyam guru who learned the art in Chennai under Adya Lakshman in the early 1960s has added a Sinhalese flavor to popularize it in the Sinhalese community, which in the past has shunned it as dance of the Tamils. Thanks to Guru Miranda Hemlatha in Sri Lanka today, Bharatanatyam is almost as Sinhalese as it is Tamil and it is as popular among Sinhalese girls as it is amongst the Tamils. Presently, there are about 15 established Sinhalese gurus in Colombo alone. A teacher of 48 years standing, Miranda has adapted for Bharatanatyam themes from Buddhism and Sinhalese traditional lore and used Sinhalese songs. Undoubtedly, compulsions are inspiring different manifestations of Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm.